this just happened at DMA. Ross has smoked up the motorbike. Please hit that subscribe button so I can keep filming things like this. Hey Ross, how are you going? Man, I know I'm in the right spot. <laughs> as soon as I, I drove past, I'm like, oh, is it in here? Nice to see you, bro. I've got, I've got cameras rolling straight away, mate. Cool. Yeah, man, to put you straight on the spot. I've been wanting to visit you for a long, long time. Yeah. So, man, tell me, what, what was your, I guess, history? What, where did you start from? Um, yeah, tell okay. us your story. Um, so, I'm a mechanic by trade. Um, and I finished year 12 and then I went to TAFE and became an automotive mechanic. Um, and then my first job was at Rotary Motion in Newtown with uh, old Terry Lewis. Um, I actually worked with Tony from Rototalk. That's, that's where we first met, yeah. So I used to work with him for a couple of years. Um, and then I did a stint over at Mr. Enforce Engineering. Um, by that stage, I was sort of like, I was only really fresh in the fabrication side of things. Um, but yeah, he, he taught me a lot of what I still use today. So he taught you all about MIGs and TIGs? And, yeah, yeah. I, I'd, I'd had like a basic understanding of it from working at Rotary Motion, but from being a mechanic to just doing fabrication and it kind of just sort of ramped up from there. So, so were you bitten by the rotor bug early on? Oh yeah, it was way before that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like probably early, maybe early to mid-teens. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Now have you done a stint at PAC? Yeah, so after um, Mr. Enforcer, then I went to PAC Performance. I was there for like seven years. And now I've been here for just over four years. Yeah. So and that is so dynamic metal craft. Australia. Yeah. Okay. So it's yeah. been going for that long now. Yeah. It was four years in August. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, man. Let's show us a, a couple of builds first up, and then I want to check out. I I, I really want to see that bike. <laughs> I'm, I'm desperate to see the bike. Um, uh, this will be a Maceport car. It's got a quad rotor in it. Can we have a look at the engine at all? Would Bill mind? Do you think? Yeah, that's fine. Um, so yeah, this is already carved, the engine is already mounted, and it's just here. Um, we basically got to put a cooling package in it and then finish off all the rest of the fab work and then they can take it. Now, are you working in conjunction with PWR? I buy all my cores off them, um, and then I make all the rest here. Okay. Yeah, so do you need a hand with the bonnet? No, no, it's, right. it's not sitting on here. So this will most likely be a billet? Um, now, single turbo. That's next level, man. So that's going to be dry sump. Yeah, there will be, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a single sort of pro mod precision, I think, is going on this one. Now, is that going to be street registered? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I think that's what they're going to do with it. Street registered with those size tubs, yeah. four rotor. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, it puts wild. a smile on your face. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it'd be awesome, yeah. wouldn't it? Uh, I think it'll have a, more than likely, it'll have a turbo 500 behind it. I cannot wait to see this thing go. Um, this came to us basically, it was already painted, but obviously he's painting it again. Um, and he just said, man, do whatever you want, just treat it as if it's your car. So we did whatever we wanted really. Um, we, we basically started off the mountain engine and box. Uh, we did a complete rear end, uh, all the sheet metal, uh, all the cooling package, exhaust system, um, whatever you see, we kind of- That's did. what you've done. Brace box. Wow. So on and so forth. Um, what are the specs on this? Um, what size turbo? Uh, that's a 42. Um, Garrett 42. Uh, Tony from Rotor Talk, we've built an engine for this one. Stretch the quarters, put the wheel tubs in it, uh, diff housing, uh, all the sheet metal. Uh, like inside the boot, I wanted to cut all out inside the boot, so we've done all that. Um, we're in the process now of just shedding up the rest of it. We wanted it sort of all like closed in and around the uh, tail lights. Um, so we'll do that. The fuel tank's already made for it. What about this one here? Uh, so this is Tony from Rotorsaw, his brother's car, Enzo. Um, this is 20B powered, or will be 20B powered, um, with a uh, super five-speed R154 behind it. Um, so you've yeah, done... pretty much the same, yeah. We do all the tablet here. Um, that's a rat. And then here yeah, on the rear end, he's running two, three, five, sixty radials. So um, we just did a small set of tubs, 
um, guard stretch again, um, a little bit of sheet metal in the boot. And it depends how low they want to go. Like with a sedan, like say for instance, uh, this car here, you didn't want to, as soon as you go, uh, you want to sit it low, then you've got to tub the inside of the doors and move the door locks up. And if you didn't want to do that on this example, um, but we have gone pretty much as high as we can. Um, and say you wanted to fit like a 275-60 radial, that's pretty much what you've got to do to these things. Um, yeah, and then width-wise, just however wide you have to make it, it'll come out of the tyre. Because that's, that's a lot They're big tyres, yeah. Out. I mean, they're small cars with a big wheel, like... Even all the door, so you've got to fabricate that all. Yeah, so this kind of gets pushed up and then you move the door lock up and... Old Faithful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was one of my first videos I ever did with you and the questions were, yeah, I look back and they'll, yeah, it's like, oh, what was I saying? But it's still here, man. Yeah, it's still here, yeah. yeah. You're not ever going to move it on? Uh, I don't think so, no. It'll just sit here and collect dust, which kind of adds to the... Let's roll it out. Let's roll it out so we can have a look at it. Let's uh, put it yeah. out over here. Just over here. So let's do this properly this time. <laughs> <laughs> let's start with the chassis. Um, okay, so it's a 1975 model, uh, Suzuki RE5. Uh, the front half of the frame is factory. And basically, I've, I've chopped it and spliced it through the guts um, and sort of made my own hardtail. Um, but yeah, as far as the front forks and all the front end geometry is all factory. Um, like the engine um, mounting is all factory. Um, and then the rest I've pretty much made myself. Um, the tank is off some other Suzuki, I can't, can't even remember what model. And then obviously you just make everything to suit, so pipes, bars, uh, the suicide shifter, I made a radiator for it. Show me the suicide shifter. Yeah, so the suicide shifter. How did you shifter, make that all work? So basically, instead of having the clutch lever on the handlebars, it's got a clutch lever and a gear selector on a shaft. And it's just got um, a series of linkages which changes gears. Now, um, how could you make this thing more extreme? How could I make it more extreme? Yeah. Uh, Do you have any plans <laughs> to make it work straight? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, some people have told me I oh, maybe should look at turbocharging it, but uh, I like it the way it is. It's cool the way it is. Yeah, you could do belt drive or something. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't really want to start pulling it apart and redoing things. So. Now, have you changed anything since the last time we um, we had a look at it? Uh, Those many not. years ago. No, no, I don't think so. That was all your fabrication there with the. Um, yeah, radiator. so that's the radiator and that's the uh, engine oil cooler. Um, a lot of this fabric was done a long time ago. Like I've, the bike was finished in, I think, 2000 and 2012, maybe? Yeah, it has been. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I haven't really... This I think I might have made another set of mufflers from memory and then that was about it. How did it go getting, uh, uh, I guess... Um, uh, did it need engineering to get it straight yep, registered? Yep, it needed engineering. Where is because it's so old. Is, there, is, is, is really that still on paper on or is there a plate on there still, Ross? Did no, they give you a paper. plate? Yeah. Ah, so it's all, all yeah. on paper. Yeah, just because it was so old, it was kind of fairly easy to do. So I'm what's what's interested. happening with the bike back then? Um, so I actually bought a whole bunch of them in from, uh, from the States a while back. I've actually sold all of them and that one uh, I'm going to keep. So that's what they look like. Really? Factory, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. But like the fairings are a factory um, uh, option, but so the rest of the bike is. That's kind of what they look like. So how many hours do you think you've spent on it to get it from that? Oh, who knows? I don't know. Who knows? It'd have hundreds. To be, uh, yeah. Hundreds and hundreds. I was going to yeah. say, it'd have to be a couple hundred hours, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, I actually started, I started, I bought it when I was working at... Um, I was working at Mr. Enforcer. That's when I started working on it. That's how long I had it. So where are your welds? Where, were the, where did you start welding? <laughs> <laughs> Can we say there's a progression? You went uh, from here, yeah. and they slowly got it better. <laughs> yeah, they're hidden under all the powder coat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how cool is that? Is there any chance later on we can get you to fire it up? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so what's the go with these ones here? What are you making here? Um, so these, um, 
uh, in the cooler tanks. So I'm doing a run of cooler tanks for a number of Sydney shops. Um, so these are a couple of processes away from being uh, ready to weld. Um, so these start out as sheet metal tanks and they get basically cut folded you know, internally and externally welded and then they get finished on the outside. So um, there's just a sanding process and then a scotch pot process and they, um, they will be ready to weld. The thinner the material, the quicker it will dissipate the heat. Um, the only reason I go 3 mil on the intercooler tanks is you're going to have, you know, you might have 30, 40, 50 pounds of boost pressure in some of these cars and I don't want the tank to sort of balloon out. Um, whereas a radiator tank, I'll make that out of 2 mil because it only sees 13 or 15 psi, whatever it is. Um, and that's enough for that. So, yeah, that's why the intercooler tanks are made out of 3 mil and then the, and then the uh, radiator tanks are made out of... Now, is there anything that you do in, in terms of inside the cores or inside here for extra strength at all? Have you ever had no, to do that? No, I've okay. never had to do that, no. I've never had one buckle. fail or buckle or whatever yet, so... Okay. That's not to say it can't happen, um, but I've, I would only ever do something like that if I've had a failure somewhere and I've never had, so... So these are the uh, billet oil cooler tanks. So these were also made out of 3 mil um, originally, and I did see some of them um, start to balloon out a little bit. So um, I've got these machined up and they're basically a five mil wall thickness, which is consistent all the way through. Um, so all the oil coolers that I make now have these tanks on them. So when they balloon out, Ross, so you've got your oil in. you got all, yeah, you're all in, all out. Yeah. Are you finding that sometimes it can bend this? It would balloon out on the biggest surface area, which will be through there. Okay. So like people are running over 100 psi of oil pressure. So, especially on a cold start, if you start a cold when the oil pressure is the highest and give it a big rev, it might, you know, spike or whatever. So that's when the damage can Yeah, happen. yeah. And then, you know, I've seen some of the sheet metal ones balloon out. Eventually, they end up cracking along one of the welds somewhere. So, I uh, decided to make them out of billet. So that's and a new product that, yeah. People yeah, I've had, these, I've had these made for a while now, a couple of months. And then these are some in, uh, small, um, intercooler tanks that we got machined out of billet. So it's basically just a smaller version of that um, for motorbikes. Now, what also do you think about painting these or getting them ceramic coated or heat treated in a colour in terms of heat? Yeah, so you can get um, specific uh, heat dispersant coatings for them. Um, guys at Compcoat. Uh, uh, do my intercoolers and radiators and normally I'll just get the tanks um, just normal powder coat and then they'll put a heat disbursement coating on the core only. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. It's not really good practice to powder coat the core because it just clogs them up. Um, yeah, so they'll do that. You can also get specific like ceramic uh, based coatings um, that will dissipate the heat out of the intercoolers and radiators. So that's what they start with. So this is a <coughs> RX3 radiator or cooler setup. Um, with one of our signature fan shrouds and a fan. Um, so yeah, this is ready to bolt into an RX3. Now has that been, uh, I guess, is that going to be polished or? Uh, this more than likely will be powder coated. Um, I can get them coated, but normally I'll supply them raw to all the shops and they just get them coated. <clears throat> uh, whatever colour they like. Now what sort of pricing are we looking at for, for that complete uh, setup? This one, what are these? These are... Uh, there's about three grand sitting there with a shroud and a fan. Okay, and that's a heavy duty yeah. spell? Yeah, it's a 3000 CFM uh, spell fan. And what's going on over here, Ross, with the uh, RX8? So this is just a mock up engine. Um, it's a three rotor Torve. So basically, it's a three rotor engine but using Torve rotors and housings. Um, and then I've got a, a T56 Magnum bolted behind it with a sequential shifter. Um, and this will be going in the RX-8 above us. Um, yeah, it'll be turbocharged. Um, basically, I want to sort of try and build sort of like a some sort of roll racing sort of a car. Um, I'm not going to butcher the car up too much. I just want to leave it looking sort of standard, but yeah, with maybe 
six, seven hundred horsepower. I'll be happy with that. What's the reason with the twelve A housings? Yeah, so basically, it's going to have twelve A rotors and housings. You, I, I could run machine down thirteen B housings, um, but I like having the genuine twelve A housing, so that's what it's going to have. That'd be very hard to get these days. I'd... Yeah, well, I mean, I've been collecting for a while, so I've got I've got new housings and I've got all seven new plates. Um, the cranks you can buy. So this is going to be yours. Yeah, yeah. I've always liked twelve A, so. So why not go to three road twelve eh? No one's really I mean there's a couple of engines floating around but they're not really common. Polish up the chrome, you know what I mean? Well, <laughs> this bike doesn't know about <laughs> what's gonna happen to it in a second. Ready to smash it.